So, remember Fontus, the self-filling water bottle? If you're an adventurer, you know the anxiety that comes with running out of water in the middle of a tour. The one I said that would never work. The one that was featured in Engadget, Time, The Verge, Innovation Nation, Focus, The Huffington Post, The Weather Channel, IFL Science, The Smithsonian Institute, Motherboard, Gizmodo, and so forth. Well, they've had an update with a big reveal. But first of all, let's remind ourselves of what they promised. The last thing you want is dehydration when you're miles away from home. Fontus is a self-filling water bottle that allows you to plan your adventures without having to worry about heavy water loads. Well, after a year of almost constant research in places like France and Hong Kong, Thailand and Austria, because, you know, Indiegogo dollars. And this was the only way they could get atmospheres with different humidities, was by taking these dehumidifiers to various places like Thailand. It's not like you could create a humidity controlled environment or something by just closing the door in the bathroom and running the shower for a bit. Or if you want something a little more fancy than just doing it in the bathroom, you can get a climate controlled cabinet off eBay for about a thousand bucks that would more than cover the range of conditions that they need. But hey, are you ready for the big reveal? Here it is. Now sure, it's not quite like the original in that everything was going to be in this tiny little bit on top of the bottle, and now it's about half the size of the bottle. Sure, the original claimed that it could get one litre of water in about two hours, and now it's reduced to about one litre in eight hours. And that's not running off solar power, you know, like in the original ad, that's running off the mains power at 200 watts. For me, it's like magic because out of thin air and sun, we are bringing this bottle to fill itself with drinkable water. That is, their specifications are basically now exactly those of a commercial dehumidifier. Apart from their form factor looks kind of like a bottle. And even at that, they've not got it working yet. They need a few months for something. But hey, look, you can run it in the kitchen. Not quite sure why you'd want to do that, seeing as getting your water by running a dehumidifier costs about 100 to 1,000 times as much as the water that comes out of the tap in the same kitchen. Further, you can get a litre of water out of the tap in about six seconds, whereas with Funtus, it will take about six hours. It's kind of a long time if you want to fill the kettle and the water that comes out of the tap in the kitchen, he's at least treated. Whereas what you condense out of the air might have all sorts of other things in it. And on top of that, you don't have to add anything to the water that comes out of the tap. Unlike with Fontus. But hey, at least it folds up nice and compact. Not quite sure why you'd want to do that, seeing as it only works in this configuration. So folding it up just renders it useless or should I say, more useless. But hey, let's keep this positive. If you want a useless invention that no one's ever gonna use, I guess, yeah, I could as well design it such that it takes up as little space as possible. Swish. And the new Fontus is the gift that just keeps on giving. I mean, remember, initially they were gonna run the whole thing off about a 10 watt solar panel. We created a compact, small and efficient technology, completely independent and easy to use which was gonna be part of the design. It was gonna wrap around the bottle. Well, they've decided to give you the benefit of not adding a power source like that. That's right, your self-filling water bottle won't work at all unless you buy a power supply for it. We decided not to limit the efficiency of our bottle by binding it to a predetermined solar mat size. So they give you this great advantage that you can run it off any power source that you buy. And seeing as a 100 watt solar system will cost you somewhere between two and $300 and weigh two or three kilos. 
and that'll only get you about one kilo of water per day under optimal high humidity, high temperature conditions. And if that's not enough for you, it just keeps getting better. Because even though these things were meant to start shipping a month or two ago in April of 2017, well, I think that's the real purpose of this update is to tell you that they're going to be the best part of another year delayed. That's they want to start producing in approximately three to five months from now. And the bottles will be shipped in approximately five to eight months from now. But curiously, while well, all they really did here was reinvent the dehumidifier and call it a self-filling water bottle without doing the basic thermodynamic calculations that show that this is just a really, really dumb idea. And I mean without doing the real basic calculations. I mean, here in the original, they said they were going to run it off USB. USB is 5 volts. Power is current times 5 volts. So if in now it's going to run off 200 watts, that would mean that you would be carrying 40 amps through a USB cable. My guess is a USB cable would melt and catch fire at about mm, 5 amps, and they would be looking at doing 40 amps. Now they want to run it off AC and the mains, which is fine. Unfortunately, the Peltier devices, like the one in Fontus, run off about 12 volts DC. And you've got, in Europe, 200 volts AC. So you've got to both step down the voltage and rectify it. And that sort of thing requires a power brick. And these are sort of similar requirements to those that you would need for a very powerful laptop. And just to give you some perspective on all this, these are some of the images you get when you search for a 200 watt power brick. Yeah, curiously not shown in the Fontas video. And at best, the water that you're going to get out of a dehumidifier like this is going to be about 100 times as expensive as water you get out of the tap. And that's in the optimistic case where you have mains power, high humidity and high temperature. You know, sort of thunderstorm weather. And let's be real, in those conditions, we get lots of free water from the air all the time. It's called rain. For me, it's like magic because out of thin air and sun, we are bringing this bottle to fill itself with drinkable water. And even at that, with their optimistic numbers, they say you're only going to get about one litre of water per day when you use a solar mat. And then there was the one they were going to mount on the bicycle. The Fontas ride is designed for bikers and uses the airstream to press air into the bottle. Where they had solar panels this size about 10 square centimeters. Now they reckon you're gonna need about 5,000 square centimeters of solar panel to make this work, meaning they were off by a factor of about 500. We've been working on Fontus for a couple of years now here at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. And that will only get you about one liter of water per day which might be linked to why they've kind of given up on the ride altogether. Due to regrettable delay in the development phase, we've decided to postpone the implementation of our technology in the ride system and not move into production at this point. Every ride supporter will be automatically upgraded to the Fontas Aero without further charge. Supporters who are not happy with an upgrade may request a refund until the 30th of June 2017 by sending us an email and their product information too. Yeah, I mean, who could possibly feel misled here when they were promised this? The Fontas ride is designed for bikers and uses the Airstream to press air into the bottle. And they ended up getting a dehumidifier for the kitchen. And none of this stopped them from raising about a third of a million dollars. But this promise of free water from the air is clearly a seductive one. I mean, damn, this paper in one of the world's top science journals from one of the world's top universities claimed just that. And again, it's bullshit. You simply cannot beat the thermodynamics. Now, interestingly, if you actually check out that MIT paper, you'll see that it's rated in the top 0.1% of all the papers in this top science journal. I mean, hell, part of me was really tempted to do another crowdfunder to give them $10,000 if they could actually show their device worked as specified. You know, we'll buy them a kilogram of their metal organic framework and let's see them get three liters of water out of that device per day. 
you know, without requiring the use of any additional power. Anyway, back to Fontas. Seems they've had a bit of a, a replanning here, and they've decided that Peltier-type devices, you know, thermoelectric coolers, might not be the way to go. And so they've started looking at mini compressor-based systems. So with all of these dehumidifiers, you need to make something cold. In order to do that, you need to make something hot as well. And then you need to get rid of that heat somewhere, otherwise your device will simply lose efficiency. So with a Peltier device, a thermoelectric cooler, it looks like this. And you pass electricity through it, one side gets hot and one side gets cold. And that's why you need a couple of big heat sinks on that. The bigger one to get rid of the heat and the smaller one to get rid of the cold. And that's the guts of a thermoelectric dehumidifier. This is basically all Fontas ever was. Which of course means that the top of the bottle is going to be a giant metal heatsink right on top of the bottle, making it massively top heavy. But hey, I guess at least it folds up nice. So how would a mini compressor system work? Well, first of all, let's remind ourselves of what a mini compressor might look like. This is a little €9.99 Euro air compressor. Let's uh, run it, if I can manage to hold it in my hand. Ah yes, a beautiful core for a self-filling water bottle. And if you run it off the mains power for 24 hours in one of the hottest and most humid places on Earth, boom, they reckon you can get about 10 litres of water from this. Perfect. Now, in terms of efficiency, compressors are actually a much better way to go in doing this, in that you typically get better efficiencies out of compressors than Peltier-type devices. So I'm just going to demonstrate how this would work with my regular compressor. Excellent. So here we have a compressor, which is almost flat, so there's almost no pressure in there at all. So what I'm going to do now is I've got my thermal camera here. Okay, that'll do. So that's actually, as you can see, heated up the uh, the cylinder here really quite a lot, as if that's, uh, that's almost warm to the touch. So this is basically what your refrigerator does, is it compresses air, or actually refrigerant, it doesn't really matter, any gas would do it, and it gets nice and warm. And then you wait, usually this is covered in radiator fin, so you've got to radiate this heat out into the environment. And once that is done, uh, you can then decompress the gas and essentially reverse the process. Apart from when you compress it, it gets hot, but you've radiated some of that heat away. So when you decompress it, it actually gets cold. So when I decompress it, you'll see that it actually gets cold here. But I'm going to give it a minute or two to actually cool down here first. Okay, so here we are a few minutes later. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let some of the air out and we'll see what happens. There you go. So as you can see, it gets really cold down here. And that's basically how your typical fridge works. Cool, eh? So you compress air and it gets hot. And then you've got to get rid of that heat, dump it through a radiator somehow. And then when you decompress the air, it gets cold. And this is basically how an air conditioner works, except rather than waiting for five minutes for the hot gas to cool down, you actually pass it through a radiator with lots of surface area. I mean, this is one of the first things that you recognize about air conditioners is the compressor is a tiny fraction of it. Almost all of it is made up of radiators of one sort or another. In fact, I suspect that this is their compressor-based self-filling water bottle. And I hate to be hypercritical here, but I'm really not quite so sure that's what people signed up for when they said you were going to get a self-filling water bottle that you could take anywhere. Hi, I'm Christoph, and I'm the inventor of Fontos. I wanted to create a bottle that would never run dry. And even if you take a look at the pictures in their update of their micro compressor, you can see there's a big heatsink looking thing in the background. You know, kind of like they just 
took apart a mini fridge or something. In fact, if you look around on YouTube, you can actually find people have used mini compressors like this to make their own refrigerators or air conditioners. I'm not sure how fun it intends to get all that on a self-filling water bottle, uh, but I think it's going to be kind of fun finding out. The more so, seeing as the only picture that they have of a micro compressor actually in their Fontas type design makes it look like they've got no radiator fins whatsoever. And you'll recall that I was saying that that's one of the most important and largest components of, say, building a dehumidifier or a fridge or an air conditioner like this. And it's not in their designs at all. Yeah, like I say, I think that computer-sized box thing there is their self-filling water bottle. But other than that, there you have it, the perfect self-filling water bottle, perfect for those outdoor trips. Sure, it weighs more than an actual bottle of water, what with all the heat sinks and solar panels. And sure, if it's the only source of water you have, you'll only get about one third of your daily requirements, assuming that it's really hot, really humid, and for some reason, really sunny for the whole day. And assuming that you do nothing but sit around and wait for the self-filling water bottle to fill. All you have to do is trust them and give them a few more months. Because at the moment, it doesn't really work to the point where we can show you it working beyond the light lighting up on the top. However, there is one slim ray of hope, and that's that people have begun to talk on the Indiegogo campaign page about refunds. So while I was checking this out, I found this. The new bottle produces water at a rate of about 10 to 20 times slower than advertised. The new bottle does not come with the solar panel. We have no idea how much of the funds has been spent already and if this new product can be built with the funds available. Please, everyone, stop letting Christoph defer conversations to email. Keep conversations public and keep the team accountable. Christoph, I want a refund. To which Christoph first of all says that actually it will come with the solar panel. And then goes on to say, sure, we commented that we do not know the exact size of the solar mat yet, but that it will be a common outdoor solar mat, something between 60 and 100 watts, which, as you say, is recommended power if you need to travel light. Well, first of all, that's not really traveling light, in that if you take the lower estimate of the 60 watt solar mat, you're still looking at about one and a half kilograms. It's about three pounds. Secondly, I'm really not so sure Christoph knows how much those solar mats actually cost. A 60 watt solar system like this will cost you somewhere between $150 and $200. Or for a 100 watt one, it's about two to $300. Then on top of that, if you were to take a commercial dehumidifier of very comparable stats to Fontas. So we're gonna have a say a 60 watt solar mat Let's get about a 60 watt dehumidifier to go with it. And so that dehumidifier will cost about $60. And he's got to make and ship these things for $250. And that's, of course, until these folks realize when they first plug their Fontas in and say it's not sunny and it generates nothing. Or if it's not humid or not hot and humid, it's going to generate nothing, which means they paid $250 for a bottle that on average won't even generate enough water to make a cup of coffee per day. Honestly, if I were a Fontas backer right now, I'd be writing for that refund. And like many channels of late, I too have been hit hard by the ad boycott. So if you enjoy cool sciencey videos like this one and want to see more like it, you can support this channel directly through Patreon.